Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. A very good Saturday evening. This is the weekend edition of Primetime News. I'm Joel Outskoon. We're coming to you live and direct this evening from our news studios in Colombo. Let's start off with a look at the headlines. Unrest in Pinde near Kegol due to the death of a seven-year-old girl who was run over by a bus. Political stage intensifies as election draws closer. Minister Sajid Premadasa reiterates anti-corruption stance. Strong winds leave over 650 homes in Divlopitiya damaged. Starting off the news with a look at the President's diary now addressing a public rally in Damulla today. President Maitri Palasirisena was once again highly critical of fraud and corruption in the country. The unruly nature of politics which emerged in the country centered around fraud, corruption, theft and wastage has destroyed this nation. The only thing stopping our motherland from reaching the same heights as other developed nations in the world is the corruption among our politicians. So we need a group of clean politicians. No matter what resources we have and what we get, our institutions will get destroyed if our politicians aren't honest. If one person among two people is a thief, it does not matter at all if the other person is clean and pure. This is the truth. <laughs> And onto a story that was made in headlines this evening, residents in Kegol staged a demonstration obstructing the Kegol Avisavala main road from the Turanagaha Piti area in protest against the death of a seven-year-old girl in a motor accident involving a bus. The accident occurred this afternoon in Pindeni area, leaving the girl's grandmother and another girl injured. Police said the accident was caused by the bus driver's reckless driving. The seven-year-old girl, W.P. Chamudi, a second-year student of the Arandara Primary School, was returning home from a private tuition class when the incident occurred. The injured grandmother and the other girl were admitted to the Kekol Hospital. The driver of the bus has been arrested. However, locals in the area launched a demonstration claiming that police did not take adequate action regarding the matter. <laughs> In some weather news, more than 659 houses have been damaged due to gale force winds that swept across many areas under the Divulapitiya Divisional Secretariat area. Now, the Disaster Management Center for Gampa says the military has been called to provide aid to the affected families. 17 Gramalilidari jurisdictions were severely affected by gale winds that swept across the area at around 6.30 last evening. 20 houses were damaged in the Kirulagedra area alone. Heavy rains were accompanied by strong winds. The jack tree was uprooted by the winds. There was complete destruction. The Department of Meteorology says showers or thunder showers will occur over most provinces of the island. It adds a decrease of prevailing showery condition over the island is expected from tomorrow, while several spells of showers will occur in eastern and over provinces and in the Hamadra district. A house in Akravita Gampa was badly damaged owing to lightning strike last evening. No casualties were reported. We were asleep and at once there was a loud explosion. When we came out, there was no roof and the entire house was filled with smoke. The switchboard was ablaze. The wall was badly damaged as well. Addressing a public rally in Velavata yesterday, Minister Harin Fernando expressed some views on actions of the President and the bond scam investigations. Well, if you missed last night's broadcast, this is a snippet of what he said. The person we elected has started to make various statements. I cannot accept those statements. At some places, the people have started to feel disgusted over this difference. Nimal Siripala or Susil Premajayamta did not work to elect Maitripala Sirisena as the president. We tussled, raised green flags across all Pradesh Sabhas 
and worked hard to elect Maithripala Sirisen as the president. If one is to speak about the bond issue, we are the ones who expose the rogues of the bond issue. We elected this president and brought in good governance. We introduced a system that is why the Prime Minister provided evidence. We introduced a system where ministers were forced to resign. It is because of the system we introduced for the first time in history. Three ministers were forced to resign from cabinet before the end of two years into power. Are we happy? Now they are crying thief. He is saying thief. The other is saying thief. They are having fun. At the conference, the Prime Minister said 11 billion rupees will be paid by perpetual or any other entity after the court case. We have made a public statement that they will pay. To the people at Sirasa, we have said that they will pay. Did you see it? Did you? Then, yeah, this statement as well. <laughs> In his statement, Minister Fernando stated that they worked hard to elect the president and that the money that was stolen through the bond scam would be returned. There were several politicians who took umbrage at his views and this is what they had to say during events held today. There's a bar like me, I Politicians, officials and businessmen, these are the three types of people who engage in fraud and robberies at national level as well as village level. Minister Harun Fernando says the money will be recovered. That means they must know where the money is now. What the government should have done is refrain from robbing the country. They could have caught the old robbers, brought them before the law, recovered that money. But this government has been forced to say that they will catch the thieves in this government itself and bring justice. It will not happen. The media, the public and all other progressive forces should come together to continue the struggle against this crime perpetrated by forces including the leaders of the UMP. If there's a possibility of a UMP becoming a president, why would they feel the general secretary of our party is a common candidate? The UMP didn't appoint him. It was the people that elected the president. A group of SLF peers voted for him. UMP has voted for him. And he received a mandate. Everyone needs to accept that he is everyone's president. That is the first thing. No one can say, we appointed him. These are juvenile political comments. Everyone is trying to take the sword into their hands these days. However, the president has been able to reveal all this only because the SLFP was in the government. The points they raised have been sent to the Attorney General. I can confidently state that as a cabinet minister, that the Attorney General will take the necessary action. In an interview with the BBC's singular service, former President Mahindu Rajpaksa expressed views regarding the possibility of returning for another term in office. UMP MP Bandulal Bandarigo expressing his views at a public rally reacted to the statements of the former president. If courts accepts the arguments put forward by the Attorney General, the situation changes for both Chandrika and myself. It means our tenure will come to an end if we contest twice in the future. If courts accepts the argument of the Attorney General, I can contest as well. Politicians at present are speaking of the President seeking Supreme Court determination over his tenure. It is five years or six years. Before the Supreme Court announced its decision, politicians made their opinions because they are greedy for power. It is their only aim. They cast aside the agenda for the nation. We saw the persons who was president and worked for his family and then became an MP saying he wishes to contest for a third time. This person could even complete his two terms. Is this not a shameless act? Tarang, uh, you are tuned on to the weekend edition of Primetime News. We'll head on to a short commercial break and be right back. Back to the news. Now, the Committee on Public Enterprises is to summon officials of the Central Bank and Finance Ministry once again. The objective of summoning them is to get feedback on the steps taken by the Central Bank and Ministry of Finance to implement the recommendations made by COPE in its report on the investigations of the 2015 bond issue. The COP report into the controversial bond issuance was submitted to Parliament on the 28th of October 2016. The report clearly states that the steps taken in this regard by the Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance needs to be communicated to Parliament. We will be recalling members of the Central Bank in order to inform Parliament. Once the Presidential Commission report is tabled in Parliament, we hope to discuss this in COP and summon the Central Bank officials. 
This is our duty to Parliament. Summoning officials of the Central Bank means we will be summoning officials of the Ministry of Finance as well. We hope to bring in the Secretary to the Ministry of Finance as well as the Secretary to the Ministry of National Policies and Economic Affairs because the Central Bank is under this ministry. <laughs> Meanwhile, Director General of the Commission to Investigate Allegations of Bribery or Corruption, President's Counsel Sarah Jaman, is speaking in News First, stated the Bribery Commission has received the report compiled by the Bond Commission. He noted that officials are in the process of examining the recommendations of the report and investigations would begin soon. Now, earlier this week, it was announced that a copy of the report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry has been handed over to the Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. With that, we would like to shift your attention on to more news here at home. Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Minister Sajid Premadas, is speaking to masters in Panyagamu in Hambantota, commented on corruption. They say fraud and corruption is at its extreme. The people who skimmed off Sri Lankan Airlines and Mihin Lanka as well as the Hambantha Report and the airport are preaching about corruption. They extorted massive commissions from concrete and tar projects for road development. I must make it clear, the government of President and the Prime Minister is ready to punish anyone who has committed a wrong. The government is bound to implement all the recommendations made by the President to the letter. We will never protect the rogues and we will not appear for them. The people gave us state power not to commit theft. Therefore, when we are nabbing the thieves, we must nab the former thieves as well. The present-day wrongdoers must also be nabbed. All of them must be treated equally. If one is to comment on the reports of the commissions of investigation, the recommendations will be implemented without fail. <laughs> The Potujana Perimuna held one of its meetings opposite the Palmadula bus depot this morning. <laughs> During this meeting, a heated confrontation took place between the police and the supporters. <laughs> The theft at the central bank is the largest financial scam in the whole world. What has happened to our leaders? They behave like small children in parliament. I recall a cricket match when I witnessed that. The chance were orchestrated like in a cricket match. I will not fall into that level and neither should you. However, he did not act how a prime minister needs to act. For the first time, a prime minister is accused of looting the bank. Not only that, it is the first time a prime minister behaved in such a manner in parliament. Nowhere else has a prime minister behaved in such a way. Bank Ranil asks who is the thief. He should go in front of a mirror. Then he will see who the thief is. Considering the statement made by the Prime Minister, I believe he needs to be sent to the premature babies unit. We need to sympathize with such people. However, we must immediately send them for examination. If we fail to do that, who knows what else the Prime Minister would do. Former parliamentarian and coordinating secretary of the Sri Lanka Podujana Permuna, under the Polgampola, defected and pledged support to the president today. President's media division says several candidates put forward by the Podujana Permuna to contest the upcoming local government elections, along with a number of district activists, met with the president yesterday and pledged their support. Kalutara District Executive Committee member of the National Freedom Front, Premulal Fonseca, called on the president today and pledged his support. Balabitya Lienage Ajit, a Podujana Peramuna candidate contesting for the Lunugam Vehera Pradeshya Sabha and several others, called on the deputy leader of the United National Party, Minister Sajit Premadasa, and pledged allegiance. With less than a month away for the local government elections, several incidents of violence are being reported. A group attacked the party office of a UNP candidate contesting for the Beliatta Pradesh Sabha. A correspondent said the person who was injured was admitted to the Tangol Base Hospital. One of the attackers has been identified and the Tangol police has commenced investigations to arrest him. A group had attacked the office of the SLFP candidate contesting for the Arachikattua Pradesh Sabha. Police said investigations are underway to identify the attackers. Let's have a listen to views from the political arena. 
On the 8th of January, we established an executive in the country to support you. Following that, we won the parliamentary elections in August. This is why some tremble when they hear the United National Party. They are with us in government, but reprimand us at night. <laughs> They thought they can make Maitri Palasirisen a partyless president. He does not favor anyone. They assumed they could play the same game. Place Ranil Vikramasinghe and chase off Maitri Palasirisen. As a minister of the government established by UNP's Ranil Vikramasinghe, they are seated with us and reprimanding the party and our leaders. I wish to ask them what were they doing when the Rajpaksas were in power. Before the report is tabled in Parliament, one cries, thief. Another also does the same. And then the Prime Minister cries, thief. The entire country now is aware of the thief's mother, father, grandfather and other relatives. They asked for a debate and the Prime Minister granted one. Those who wanted it jumped into the well of Parliament and caused chaos. There were no MPs from the UNP who came prepared for a fight. We request the Prime Minister to establish a single party government after the elections. We can work for our supporters and uplift the economy of the country. Who is stepping forward to fight on behalf of Ranil Vikramasinghe? Half of the footnote gang who made a large number of phone calls were present. Jala Jabodhana's son came forward yelling and fainted at once as if he was struck by the gods. The joint opposition includes people from various avenues of life. They have moonshine producers, rapists, brothel owners, illegal sand miners and others. Though they are elected, they will never put a stop to their old habits. The issue we have is how they are being selected. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. of class. Switch on style with Kevilton modular switches. To the news now. Today was the final day of the second phase of the Gum at the Gumming Gumata Wabbing Wabbata program, a journey to discover our ancient hydraulic heritage. On the 17th of December, the initiative was launched at the Bellankadavala El Langawa or Wava system located in the Palugaswava Divisional Secretariat in the Anuradhapura district with the aim of conserving the magnificent irrigation system for future generations and water to be used for agriculture. Why did Sri Lanka, which boasts of a proud irrigation history, face such an issue when it comes to have access to water? During our journey to carry out research, we identified the El Langa system, which is connected to the irrigation system of the country, has been destroyed. The Bellankadavar El Langawa, which was subject to inspection under the first phase, comprises of 21 ravers and a series of waterways. Eight of these ravers were inspected in the first phase. They were the Bellankadavala Vava, Vidane Vava, Thalakula Vava, Galkadavala Vava, Demunnava Vava, Tindukulama Vava, Kayan Vava and the Patia Vava. In the second phase, the Kumbukheti Spring, which supplied water to many vavas, including the Veera Vava, which is part of the Bellankadavala Vava system, located on the valleys of the Malvatu Oya, was inspected. A series of vavas were also inspected. Dr. P. B. Dharmasena, a renowned lecturer at the universities of Peradhinya and Rajagata, along with several other scholars, accompanied the team in the extended field examination. Today being the final day of phase 2, the Siambala Vava, Olgam Vava, Kola Vava and the Damagulla Vava were inspected. The ruins along the banks of the Kapugama Vava were also inspected. The locals in the area performed a ritual today to mark a successful conclusion to the initiative. Uh, 
Uh, now, this is a Theravili caveat that we uh, found out about while we were investigating into the Bellangkadavilla cascade system. And the answer to that Theravili caveat goes like this Kushta Sagaraya Horivila Noveda Saki. We are currently here at the Sorova of the Horivila Vava. Now, this is the final Vava in the Bellangkadavilla cascade system. This is actually a juncture of two cascade systems and what we did was we conducted the investigation into the Bellang Kadavala cascade system. Uh, we worked our way uh, from the from the top to bottom of the Bellang Kadavala cascade system and we identified the issues of uh, different vavas in this uh, cascade system and it's actually quite fascinating uh, the connection uh, between this great irrigation civilization that we've had and uh, also on the other hand it's quite sad as to how far it has uh, depreciated over the years uh, but nonetheless we will be compiling a report together with the University of Peradeniya and the Rajarata University and we will be presenting it to the relevant authorities in hope of conserving uh, the knowledge and the experience the technology uh, that the farmers and our ancestors in this area possessed According to the Ministry of Finance and Mass Media, an agreement has been inked between Sri Lanka and India to upgrade the Kankasan to Ray Harbour. Now, the agreement will provide financial assistance worth 45.27 million US dollars. The agreement was signed on Wednesday in New Delhi between the Managing Director of the Export-Import Bank of India and Treasury Secretary Dr. RHS Samarathunga, Secretary to Treasury of Sri Lanka. The project is expected to develop the Kankasanth Ray Harbour into a fully-fledged commercial port. The fresh assistance is expected to be used for the remaining two phases involving works relating to the rehabilitation of breakwater and existing pier, construction of a new pier for commercial cargo handling, installation of port infrastructure facilities. Speaking to News First, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Dr. Parakramadi Sanayaka noted, the funds are being granted to develop the Kankasanthu report through a G2G financial line of credit. He noted that steps will be taken to transform the KKS harbour into an international port in line with the SLPA's efforts to develop coastal shipping in Sri Lanka. The Chairman of SLPA also noted that the KKS harbour will be 100% owned and managed by the Ports Authority. Well, with the latest developments surrounding the Hambantu report, no doubt the public will keep a close eye on the development of the KKS Harbour. Moving on, the World Bank says Sri Lanka's economy is to accelerate by 5% in 2018, mainly because of strong private consumption and investment. Now, last week, the Central Bank Governor Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy announced Sri Lanka's economic growth will be in 2018 bounced back in between 5 to 5.5% 5 .5 from a less than 4% growth in 2017. The World Bank report titled Global Economic Prospects says smaller Asian economies such as Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Cambodia and the Maldives continue to benefit from robust growth in China and India, including resurging trade and substantial infrastructure development. The report notes that in Sri Lanka, activity expanded at an estimated 4.1% in 2017, below the June forecast as a result of disruptions from droughts and floods. It adds Despite monetary policy tightening to ease inflatory pressures, in the first half of 2017, credit growth remained strong, supporting private consumption and investment. Growth in Sri Lanka is forecast to average 5.1% a year over 2018 to 2020, mainly reflecting strong private consumption and investment growth. Exports will be supported by the reinstatement of the generalized scheme of preferences with the European Union. The report says Sri Lanka's economic reform agenda supported by World Bank and IMF programs is expected to sustain macroeconomic stability and support potential growth over the medium term and public debt is expected to decline amid ongoing fiscal consolidation. There's a great debate in the country regarding decisions taken by the government to provide concessions to the liquor manufacturers. Here are some of the views expressed in this regard. As the election draws closer, this government reduced the price of beer and wine. Not only that, a certain liquor manufacturer gets his license renewed before paying taxes. We know that the Mendis distillery owned by Arjuna Loisius owed a total of 580 million rupees to the government by December last year. 
As of yesterday, he had paid only 120 million, but his license has been extended. They have given tax exemptions for liquor in order to appease factions in the government. The people of this country are left with nothing. <laughs> We cannot imagine what the government or the minister wants to achieve. Are they hoping to boost liquor sales? Are they hoping to boost liquor consumption? Or are they hoping to spread the usage of alcohol among the women as well? As a Mahasanga, we cannot agree with this. We need to clearly tell the government to think about the people of this country. There are plenty of things that they could do. Why are they taking such decisions when there is no request to do so? First up in sports, it's cricket. Sri Lanka Cricket's national selection panel has appointed Suranga Lakmal as the vice captain of the test team touring Bangladesh. Sri Lanka Cricket said the appointment was ratified by Minister of Sports, Dayasiri Jayasekara. The minister also ratified the 16-member squad, which will take part in two test match series against Bangladesh. The first test match will be played from the 31st of January to the 4th of February in Chittagong, while the second test will be played from the 8th to the 12th of February in Dhaka. On that, we wrap this edition of Prime Time News. Thank you very much for stopping by. More news follows on our website, www.newsrestart.lk. I'm Zola Good night.